transparency and then also data security and privacy because I think they do kind of go uh, go together. So this is a very polarizing topic, um, but it kind of goes back to what I call a proof of process. So I love to see programs on the front facing of their of their campaigns talk about um, you know uh, what are the dates and deadlines, what type of deliverables are going to be requested from you as an applicant. Um, what does the review and selection process look like? So, for example, data is going to be redacted. You're going to be randomly distributed to the judges. This is the score sheet that's going to be utilized. And the main goal here is to help build up trust that when an applicant comes in to submit, they know that they're going to go through a fair process and that at the end of the day, if you wanted to, you can do one of two things. You could share back those results. So uh, that's uh, bullet point number B here. Is that or bullet point number A is that you can kind of show, hey, when you submitted, you actually did go through these processes. Um, the reason why this exists is that we've started to hear from people that, you know, maybe in a scholarship that they didn't get selected. A parent calls them up and says, um, you know, my daughter didn't get a scholarship, but so and so did. She's way better. Why is that? That was unfair. You scored her because of this reason. You can say, no, no, no. We have a proof of process. Here's the proof. Um, number two is that self-development. Again, um, if you have a very highly competitive um, application type of program that not everyone gets selected for, how do you provide value to all 100 applicants, not just the two that got selected? And so the idea is that your review committee can log their notes and their comments and their scores, and then in real time, you can share it back to the applicants. Again, there's uh, there's a middle ground here where the applicants can physically see how they were scored. They can use it for self-development and they can go apply for funding elsewhere. They can reapply next year or whatever it might be. Um, on top of that, too, just because we are kind of tight in time, is data security and privacy. Um, it does go hand in hand because, believe it or not, a large percentage of programs that we work with um, in a survey um, the data security policies in place could be a deterrent from the applicants even applying. For example, if you're a credit union running a scholarship program, it's very common for them to be very critical of the data security because their applicants need to be uh, confident that when they submit very personal uh, uh, financial documents, that it's, you know, it has the, the security controls in place that are, uh, that are accurate. So for you, um, the main goal here is to basically say these are life-changing programs, a lot of times they're critical to your organization. They need to be treated as such. Data security and privacy cannot be overlooked. Specifically speaking, there are so many moving parts that are changing constantly. There's many acronyms, GDPR, California Privacy Acts. Um, you can't be at the forefront of all of them, but our team can. And so leave it to the expert to make sure we're aware of like what's evolving in the space and let us kind of go out there and get audited. We'll do penetration testing. We're, in, we're SOC 2 Type 2 certified, which is like the industry gold standard. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, just note that, you know, we do care about data security and privacy. It's a, a, a topic that at this point in time is um, becoming very, very, very popular. Um, so you, you need to make sure that the tools that you're utilizing um, are, are compliant. So um, one last quick thing is that transparency conversation. Like, what does that look like? So I'm logged in as an applicant. Uh, what's cool about reviewers as well is that you can communicate with people. So you can actually send them direct one-to-one -one communication. They can respond back. You could notify them saying, hey, the program's wrapped up. Um, log back in here to see the results. And what they could in theory do is they can jump up to their evaluation section. Um, and it shows them a listing of all the scorecards that were filled out. There's super deep ends of the spectrum. You can, you can redact stuff. So it just shows you like evaluator number one, two, and three. Um, you know, some of our clients don't actually show back the score. So for example, in this example, I got reviewer four scored me as a 31. Maybe they just want them to click on reviewer number four and not see the score. The applicant can open it up and they off to the right can actually see the physical score sheet that was filled out or components of it. Again, some of our clients don't share back the full-blown score sheets. They have just a generalized comment section at the bottom. That's totally up to you. Again, this is a polarizing conversation. None of this is required, um, but it is an emerging trend that we've started to see. So